Greetings from Podcastville. The Church of What's Happening Now is brought to you by Fujisports.com. Let me tell you something. My favorite geese, that's all I wear is fucking Fuji. I had a nice, beautiful blue element on myself today. You understand me? They got a great new Superado, and they got a great new competition geek. Go take a look. Fujisports.com. If you're a fat fuck, A5, A6, let me tell you something, bro. People always try to pull you down from the guard, from behind the whole They could tug on that thing for hours. Nothing happens to that Fuji fucking geek. Dependable, been around since Jesus left Chicago. Plus, they got fucking mats. Uh, Renzo, Renzo Gracie mats. They got fucking geese. They got fucking kickboxing stuff. They got kettlebells that are rubber. Like uh, They got a bunch of great stuff. But you got to go to Fujisports.com right now. Press in. Church. Bam! And get 10% off right now, motherfuckers. Number two. Listen, you're getting in shape. You're trying to get your life together. You got to get some supplements, all right? On it's the way to go. Whether you're getting the Alpha Brain or the Shroom Tech Sport, you cannot go fucking wrong. Do you understand me? We'll talk about it more in length later on. But right now, go to honor.com and press in. Church. Oh, shit. Church. Get 10% off delivered right to your motherfucking house. You don't even have to go nowhere. Kick that motherfucking mule, Lee. What's happening? It's a beautiful day to be alive. I got the flying Jew, a.k.a. Christ killer number one. <laughs> and I got my main man, Steve DeSimone. It's fucking confessional Wednesday. We're going to talk about I don't think Steve wants here. to sit next to me anymore with the name <laughs> Christ killer. No, no, no he's all right. You're, he lets you're it adorable, go. Lee. Yeah, he lets it go. All right, you thank know, you. He doesn't hold I love you. nothing like that. Speaking love of, you. It's crazy. I was telling Lee last night that I went to Tempe this weekend. Okay. And it's because you're like, listen, uh, as a comic, we're whores. <laughs> you're a fucking whore. There comes a time around the fourth year that you just want to do everything. And yep. That's what it needs to do to make it happen. But then you have to tighten up your seatbelt at some point in your career and stop being a whore. And that's when things start happening. For yes. You. And for me, it started by taking advice from others. You know, I would listen to what Joe Rogan had to say to me. If Ari had a plug and a joke, you know, I trust Ari. Yes. You know what I'm saying? If I had a problem with something... Uh, a gig or something you have to let your ego down it, yes a lot of times and i've known you since the beginning i mean we yeah. were opening up for dice 99 i think you were the first person to put me on stage at the comedy store open mic open in mic. 2000 yeah that had to be september 2000 october 2000 it's crazy how this has been a journey for the both of us and when i see you you know you're from philly yeah you're catholic you yeah you've never seen the exorcist i mean you take Will it not seriously it. yeah <laughs> You run charities. I mean, there's so many good things you do. So when I'm around you, it makes me feel better. Like I feel you're one, of, you're one of the guys that I went to martial arts with when I was up to 16 years old. You were decent kids, didn't yeah. really curse. Yeah. They did not drink. They did not smoke pot. I found them entertaining, and I enjoyed them. <laughs> yeah. But they didn't want to go get pussy. Like, they wanted to right. hang out. We were geeks. You know, yes. We were karate geeks. Yep. And at that point, you want to go, you want to finger people. <laughs> you want to listen to you Black Sabbath, yeah, drop you know, acid. So I had two sets of friends for a while. I was trying yes. to play two sides of the fence. And the karate guys didn't know about my crazy friends, and my crazy friends didn't know about my karate friends. And then I had to make a decision one day. Yeah. And I went with the crazy people because the karate guys, and I loved them dearly. Right, they weren't as much fun. They weren't right? as much fun. Yeah, they wanted especially to when save their money and go to Honda in New York and look at that fucking geese and look yeah, at fucking yeah. elbow equipment and, <laughs> elbow. and rubber pads for your head so <laughs> yeah. you could beat each other up. But it's so weird how whenever I see you, like I could talk to you and I know you'll give me a straight answer. You know, everybody in this town blows smoke up your ass. Yeah. And that's what happens to people. Uh, Lee and I were talking about a comic we saw that that's just damaged. From what this town did to him. It's easy to happen. And it's easy that can to happen, happen very easily. Because, you know, it's so weird. Remember when you used to open up for Paulie for a long yeah. time? Did you ever have a night when people come up to you and say, you know what? We're so happy you were here. You were so much funnier than Paulie. Yeah. But then you see them go over to Paulie and go, Paulie, you're so great. We yes. love you. You're like, look at fucking people. Yes. <laughs> They're so fucking wormy. You know what I'm saying? I think that's part. that was part of Mitzi's logic to make us work the door. So we could get an appreciation for what that audience was. You get to see people who they really are. And she would like, so you would have that planted in the back of your head. Like, are you going to change who you are to please these people? Because that was one thing. I remember once I did a joke in front of her. And she just goes, you're better than that. That's all she said. And I was like, well, she goes, I don't want to say it again. You're better than that. I remember. 
it's weird when you do a fucked up joke and it kills a room and you feel it and you <laughs> feel like an asshole. But <laughs> this weekend I went to Tempe mm-hmm. and this has been, I don't know. I mean, we've been doing the podcast how long now? Five six years? Six years. Six September, years. Wow. So maybe the second, the year and a half we had the guy kidnapped call in. <laughs> How great, how great, how great of a sentence is that? I, I love it when you call me your kidnappy. The kidnappy. <laughs> I had him call in, and I apologized to him. And I sincerely meant it from my heart. Yes. You know what I'm saying? I yes. really meant it from my heart. As crazy as it sounds, guys. There's a couple calls I got to make. This Saturday night, I had like a nervous breakdown in my hotel room about a different situation in my life that I have to take care of. Okay. You know, I have like three of those loose strings that I really have to take care of. Forget my daughter. That's never going to happen. But I got to open up the line of communication with my sister again. The the phone call with my sister is a tough phone phone call. She feels cheated. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. She lost her mother. Her mother left her there. So there's a void in her heart. There's just a bunch of issues when I talk to her. And it takes me three days to get over. Yeah. Like when I hang up the phone, I got to have two martinis. I don't even drink fucking martinis. You know what I'm saying? saying. So, yeah. uh, this family I grew up with in Jersey, I got to call them soon. It's yeah. starting to eat away at me, you know. Like, I'm, a, I'm an old school Catholic. I, I, yeah. I feel guilty, whatever. Yeah. And I want to make amends. You know, That's it's it. very Mercy. lucky they came into Penance. my life. So I've kept in touch with this kid and the kidnappy. And yeah. I keep talking to him, you know, and I call him and I ask him how his mother's doing because that's why he moved to Tucson. And, yeah. and we talk, you know, once a month, whatever. And So this time we talked up to the point where he was coming to the show. Wow. You know, and then Thursday he was coming and I didn't hear from him. Friday he called me. Yeah. I was at kickboxing. I called him back. And he goes, my mother's been in the hospital. Oh, Jesus. Uh, so... I don't know if I can make it tonight, but I'll definitely see you for dinner tomorrow night. And I never heard from him all day. Okay. And I didn't remember till in between the two shows. Yeah. And I got to tell you something. I went back to my hotel room and I was kind of depressed. Like, I was really sad about it. And I was like, wait a second. Why would he want to come see me? Yeah. I fucking kidnapped him and put him in the trunk of a car for eight hours. That guy, he probably had to go to therapy for eight years because of what I did to him. Why would he want to see me? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, what, what the fuck do I think I am that this guy's going to pop up here and be my friend? Like, he even <laughs> yeah. said, let's go to dinner and let's catch up. But I got to guarantee you that before he gets in his car, he's like, what am I fucking crazy? This is the guy that put me in a fucking car and then put me in the hands with some other guy <laughs> who, thank God, he was driving without his headlights on and he got caught. This shit fucking bothers me, you know? Yeah. But then I came to terms. I go, what do I expect out of life? Mm-hmm. That people are just going to forgive you? That's bullshit that they just spew in the Bible at you. That people are really, really, really going to forgive you. It's kind of weird. You can't, the way I look at it is, for me personally, my job is to forgive. That doesn't mean I expect it from other people. Does that make sense? Like, I think you're doing everything right with that situation because you're even you're even being compassionate enough to think about things from his point of view. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That it's got to be painful for him and fear involved there. But the simple fact that you created this relationship is a miracle to me to begin with. You know what I mean? And maybe there could be that legitimate healing, that legitimate like. No, but then I turned. That's the, the secret to around. life. You know what I, I mean? I turned the tables around. I thought to myself, wait a second. If somebody put. If I had two kilos of coke, yes, and I invited you to my house, yeah. and you robbed me, would I want to see you? Not fucking really. Like I actually said that to myself. Started laughing my ass off right. at two in the morning, and then I fell asleep. Right. By the way, that's why I fell asleep on the plane the other day because I was fucking tired. Like I didn't sleep that night. This was going through my head. I was, I was like, sleeping at the airport and out of the corner of my eye, I'm like, that looks like skinny Uncle Joey. You must have lost twenty pounds since the last time I saw you. Yeah, yeah. It was incredible. It was so much fun to see. I love. That's my favorite thing about being a comedian and seeing Bumping your friends. At, yes. Oh my god. The airport is Thursday the greatest. Morning. Yeah. And it's funny when you go through certain gates. People go, "You just miss Felipe." <laughs> yeah. You just miss D.L. Hughley. You just miss Carlos. Man. It's fucking it's crazy. Great. Yeah. It's crazy on Thursday mornings at five. Yeah. I'll be sitting there sometimes, and I would just be like, I'll get there early, eat breakfast. 
like a six a.m. flight, seven a.m. flight. Yeah, I'll get there like it's. I'll get there way before six. Me too. And I get there and I just get two eggs sunny side up. I set that little Mexican kind of joint, <laughs> like a doctor. You know what I'm saying? Water. <laughs> I take my blood pressure medication. I eat my edible. Yeah. The Mexican lady knows me already because I sit at the bar. So yeah. There's no drama. Yep. People have to wait on. Have to wait for just a table. Go to, go to, go to yeah. the fucking bar and you're there by yourself. Who gives a fuck? Yep. I'm there in the corner. It's place like when you're walking pee. down. I think yeah. it's on the right hand it's side. It's on the right hand side. Yeah, I know that's fun. And I sit there sometimes, and I will see, uh, you know, George Lopez walk by, then D.L. Hughley. Yeah. The one day I saw Eddie Griffin, and it was great. It was great. And wow, he, I haven't seen him in years. Uh, years, like you just see a lot of fucking people. But back to this fucking forgiveness shit. Yeah, it's everything. It's crazy. Years ago, I fucking. Uh, it was a misunderstanding, and I and I still feel guilty about it this day because she went through surgery over it. Okay. When we were kids, we were riding bikes, and this girl was riding took my, one of my bikes, and we were li we were living on Charles Court. We, I lived on Gibbonette Terrace, but they lived on Charles Court, and the girl took my bike. That there was a bike thief that lived next door to me, and he would steal bikes, <laughs> but he would put, mix the bike parts together. Yeah. Okay. It was like a chop shop he for was, BMX he was, bikes. He was, a, yeah. he was a chop shop for anything. Yeah. The guy was just brilliant. He was, he was, <laughs> How old was he? He was my age, but he was <laughs> very much of a nerd. He had glasses. He's a dentist today, and he won't return my calls. I've called him <laughs> a bunch great. of times. And I, I, like another guy that I get, yeah. another guy that I put through the fucking mill. Yeah, but you're doing everything you can do. Does that make sense? I thought he would call back because fuck, but then I thought about him. I, I mean, he's another guy. I gave him a bike one day. Uh -huh. we, we used to be bike guys. Yep. I always grew up with bike. I loved everything about bikes until I got the lawnmower bike. Oh, uh, you the, put the lawnmower engine on the yeah, bike, the little had, mini bike? Yeah, 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 I had that one. I had the fucking uh, the Honda Mini Trail. I had the XL75, then the 80. Wow. Then I got an XL125. Then I bought a Kawasaki 175. Then I had the accident, and then no more motorcycles or bicycles in my life. That yeah. was the end of it. But until that time, I was a big bike guy, and this guy and Michael Clemens, who his family had That's fleas. A great name. You know those people that the whole family's got lice? Yeah. So it was <laughs> the special shampoo. They all had crew cuts. And nobody ate the sister's pussy. She was hot as fuck. The sister was hotter than fuck, and she lived. He was a bike dude that was sober, like a a great kid. Mike yeah. was a great, great, great kid growing up. Yeah, he would come out of like if if you were a little kid, he would come over and fix your bike for you. He wasn't gay or nothing. Yeah. He was just a great guy. We were about the same age, and in between us lived Valentine, and Valentine was the bike kid. Okay, that's the guy that's the dentist yeah, now. He, he would jerk off over bicycles. <laughs> Like, I had never seen anything like that. Like, if we would walk to the Spick store, in those days, there were two stores, the Spick store and the Chink store. <laughs> All right? The Spick store was Herman and his wife. Herman <laughs> was his name? Yeah. That's the best first name ever. Herman. Sounds like it was a joke. Oh, and he really? Was, and he was friends with my ding and Maricon, Martin the Fag. Oh, my God. That was his brother. That was Herman's brother. <laughs> and Herman didn't claim him because he was gay, so he, they wouldn't <laughs> So, so why is this a TV show? show? So my mother called. This is a TV show. My mother was friends with Martin because he was a drug dealer. And he lived under the Garcias, which I was friends with. Like, I grew up with the Garcia girls. Oh the God. one Garcia girl t would forge my report card. When I got left back, she's the one that would make copies of my report card, switch to grades, switch to grade number. Oh my God. She was brilliant. She was already doing IDs. When she was in high school, 16, I'm not going to say her name. She yep. was fucking doing IDs for people. She was that good of a fucking counterfeiter. With white out and printers and a the printer Jewelers over a printer. And, yep. You have no idea, guys. What about the like the report card one? Freaks me out. So what, that she would change you to like an A's, straight A's? A's, B's, a B minus. You know, no, realistically. And then What's attendance. What's she doing now? Is she in that business? No, no, no. She's a married chick that was married. She came to one of my shows in Jersey years ago. And I have a phone. I check in with her every six months. She That's was cool. married. She married a great, great friend of mine who went to medical school for like 32 years. Wow. Like his family had so much money. <laughs> yeah. His, family, his mother was a doctor and his father was a doctor. Okay. And they were famous Cuban doctors in Union City. Okay. And these kids went to like... 
<laughs> the Dominican Republic to be doctors, and they just stayed down there. Just had fun. Like, just had party with the right. money. I mean, when we were kids, he would just go upstairs and take money out of a box. Since wow. I was a kid, there was in his mother's room, there was a silver box and a thing with a combination on it. And they had the combination, and you, they would just go up and take whatever they needed. Wow. And we would go into the city. We'd go into Hoboken and eat on 4th Street. We would go to Hoboken. When, we, when I was, like, in the 7th and 8th grade, this guy's name was Lefty. <laughs> and he would pick me up in his car. And we Wait, how old were you? Seventh, eighth grade. And he probably was a junior in high school. Okay. And he had a car already. And he hung out with this dude, Sergio Cat. I mean, they, they were just a crew of characters. Yeah. But Lefty knew every <laughs> cool weed spot in the city. Like when I was in the eighth grade that summer, yeah. eighth to freshman year, he had a basketball court in his backyard. And I pretty much, That's when awesome. you wanted a comp, like when you wanted to fucking play ball against the top ballers, you went to Lefty's backyard. That was happening like every day, like every day, at like kinda. four o'clock. People, and at that time there were two All Americans from Hoboken, New Jersey, Juice, and his buddy Charlie or something. Oh, Charlie was Juice, and there was another one. They ended up going to Boston College. Wow, Big East, Big East, and they would take a bus to come play this to court come at Lefty's, and this guy could. They, uh, Hoboken led the county in slam dunks that year. When he was a junior, when both of them were juniors, they led the county. And slam dunks. Oh, that's it was like there was nothing better than a high school slam oh. dunk. The roof would blow off a gym. And here's the crazy thing: that in high school, this team was touted like one of the, like it was like them and Sacred uh, Saint Anthony's from Jersey City. Like Saint Hope Anthony's Oakland. was even established then. Oh yeah, was Saint Hurley's An dad the coach? Then? Oh yeah, oh yeah. And they had a kid named Rich Weinert, who was my idol. He was six foot seven. He ended up going to South Carolina to a Gamecocks. Wow. And that guy. When I first went to Superstar Basketball Camp, which was Hurley's Basketball Camp, and ate this. I was in Hurley's Basketball Camp the week Elvis died. Oh, my gosh. That same week, I still remember reading the paper like that Wednesday. I would take the number one bus from North Bergen to Journal Square and walk past Hudson Catholic where Michael Corrin and Jim Spinarco went. I've discussed this at that. Now, at this time, these two motherfuckers from Hudson Catholic were playing both in the ACC, which at that time was fucking. Wow. So Michael Corn was starting in at North Carolina as a freshman. He's wow. white dude, six foot seven, Jersey City boy, and on the other side of Duke, his teammate was at Duke, Jim Spinarco. Wow. But not really for basketball. He got a, a, a scholarship for his fucking coconut. Wow. He Jim Spinarco was still dude. on TV. Yeah, we discussed this shit a long time ago. I don't think it was with you, with somebody no. else. So Sacred Heart, it was Hudson County, Sacred Heart, and North Bergen, and Hoboken. And then you had East Orange, who everybody from Louisville at the time would, would go from East Orange to Louisville. They would call it the, a, like the a, Louisville Connection. Gotcha. That guy would just recruit East Orange, all those black neighborhoods in there. Yep. And they were fucking flying. I remember they went up against the team that went up against Houston with Five Slam and Jammer yes. in Louisville that year, yes. four of the starters were from Jersey. Wow. Like that, They called it the New Jersey Connection, Louisville and shit. But anyway, back to Lefty. Yep. Lefty, when I was growing up, would take me into, like, that's the first person who ever took me into this. Like, I was buying weed in town. Yep. And he would go, don't buy this shit. Come on, let's go into the city. And I was a Catholic. I was a devout Catholic. Devout. Mm -hmm. This is when I first started losing this was the first time I ever really lost faith in Catholicism okay. for the first time. He took me to a church mm -hmm. in the village. He goes, come on, get out. Let's go buy some weed. And I go, where are we going? And we went to the basement of the church. In the basement of the church, it was a bingo room. Mm -hmm. And there was a guy down there with all types of weed, like green weed, brown weed. And in 1978, he used to sell this shit. That was like a brick, mm -hmm. and he would. It was like weed packaged and dipped in hash oil. That's how ahead of the game this guy was. Plus, mm -hmm. he sold bars of hash. Wow! And I'll never forget going downstairs and paying for the reefer and the hash, and looking up, and the priest was in the corner. The priest was letting this guy sell weed and the thing kids. as a as a way to get money. And that's I was crazy. like, that's when I first saw things for what they, you know what I'm saying? Like, I came from a fucked up world. Yeah. But now I'm downstairs in a fucking church buying weed. And you're a kid. You're 13. I'm 13. 
And I was like, wow, the world is fucking real. Crazy. Like, this is fucking crazy. And I didn't know nothing about pedophilia or nothing like that in those yeah. days. I wasn't hip to none of that shit about priests. I didn't know nothing about that. I never heard nothing. Yeah. If anybody was a pedophile, it was me or something. I don't fucking know. I, you know what I'm saying? I don't fucking know. Yeah. But uh, Then you were talking about the bike guy, how you tortured him. No, but I was trying to think how come he never returned my call. Yeah. And him and I were like goombas. Like because I knew he had that twitch for stealing. And everybody thought he was just a nerd. Okay, the bike kid was had a twitch. Oh, right. Like he liked stealing bikes. And then he would bring them home and he would cut them apart and he would see what Michael Clemens needed. And Michael Clemens would see what he needed, but Michael didn't even know he was stealing the bikes. Gotcha. So you, and then he would take the frames, sawdust the fucking thing. The serial number the off. serial number. Yeah. And he would put a tag over it with a new serial. I mean, he was tagging in the seventh grade already. And his, and his bicycle of choice was the one from Wonderama. The Apollo or whatever. The one with the handlebars. That like would, a chopper kind yeah, of? Yeah, like a chopper with a fucking sissy bar in the back. Yeah, yeah, the he banana stole, seat. He stole all those. He would steal one a day. People would be chasing him. And he got caught a couple times and beat up. Like, he would go in the neighborhoods, cut the fence, jump the fence, take the bike, and 10 kids would chase him down the block. Sophisticated operation. Oh, no, he was a fucking savage. Kid. He was a fucking savage, this kid. And then he would take the bikes, bring them back to his house, and... Switch the body parts, colors, tires, so it was a complete different looking bike, and then he would sell it to one of us mm -hmm. or keep it for himself. He must have had 15 fucking bikes in his backyard, and he lived wow. upstairs. He was a tenant to the Ortizes. They were Jehovah Witnesses. We used to torture <laughs> them, too. We used to call them up on the phone and say, that they all they all lie, and they go bottom and shit. I really want to see the TV show where instead of the, it's your version of the Wonder Years. This just is, in that just, neighborhood is, would be the greatest thing on TV. So he was a great kid, never really got high, and he, he was raised by a mom. Uh, the the people across the street, I always say the people next door to me, and I'm lying. Mm -hmm. This is weird, because the other night I was thinking about this. I was thinking about women and what's going on with women now. Yeah. And I was thinking about when I had T.J. English on the show. And we were talking when I was on the Rogan show, and I was talking about that guy Tati that I knew. Yeah. At that time in American period in mm. that in the seventies. Yeah. I, I really hate to say this the way I'm about to say this, but I have to say this just so people are aware. Mm -hmm. You would see women with black eyes from time to time. Mm -hmm. You would see women with fat lips. You heard domestic violence, and you just walked by it. Mm-hmm. In the 70s, domestic violence was still a little fucking secret. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't accepted in my house. Like, my mother broke that fucking thing over Juan's head, and that was it. But the thing I saw one Christmas, like, I got in trouble one time for domestic violence, and it really bothered me. This was when I was the fucking kiss of death in 95. I was around somebody who had bad energy. Mm-hmm. And I kept getting in trouble with her. And one time I ended up getting domestic violence. I remember how much it bothered me. It bothered me because of the event I saw on that block when I was like on the seventh grade. There was a couple who lived across the street. Mm -hmm. And one night we had to let the woman in our house. And the beating her husband had put on her. I have not even seen a boxer look that bad. Like, the cops would have put this guy in jail for 20 years when he did to this chick. He burned her with cigarettes. He busted her head open. Jesus. He fucking cut her. He punched her. Her lip, her teeth were missing. My mother had to threaten the guy with a gun. They wrapped her up. They put ice on her. She didn't want to go to the hospital. Her fucking side was purple. He was Jesus kicking her. I mean, God. And I remember talking about that dude, Tati, from the corporation, his wife, Nina. Mm -hmm. He would throw ferocious beatings on it. It was part of the lifestyle yeah. that you beat your fucking wife. Like, that is fucking absurd to me. That, machi that machismo part of it, of smacking a woman in the mouth or something like that, that's fucking crazy to me. Yeah. But it was something that was a little hidden secret in America. Right. You know, Irish dads, yeah. you know, they were just pounding on fucking kids. Yeah. You know, I know a family where the dad was pounding on a kid. I knew a family where the, where the son was pounding on the dad. Jesus. I grew up with a fucking kid who used to beat his dad up with his cane. My God. 
Well, I got to tell you something that's pretty funny. He would take the cane from Mrs. Oh, Beat and would it. Fuck you. Give me the car keys. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. I'm, I won't do what you tell me. Fuck you. I won't do what you tell me. Fuck Rage you, against the machine. I won't do what you tell me. Oh, man. And you want me to tell you something funny? I could call me about five years ago. The big daddy came? The guy, the kid, <laughs> the guy who was beating his dad? And he called me, and I think he remembered I had seen it a couple times. Yeah. And he called me, and he goes, I've been looking for your number for a while. My mom still says you owe money, but he goes, I, I want to call you because my dad died, and, and I, I miss him a lot. And now I know what you were going through at that age, and I can't even imagine how, how tough you were for going through it. Yeah. And when I got off the phone, I remembered that he beat his dad up in front of him. time with a cane a couple times, he beat him up with a fucking cane. <laughs> Crazy. Do you, I remember the first time I saw one of my dad's, my, one of my friend's dad's hit, uh, like not even hit, compared to what you're talking about. There's nothing, just like a little smack in the back of the head. But I, I was, my parents, my parents would yell, but they wouldn't do. I like, I never got more than spanked. I don't think. Maybe smacked once or twice. Were you? Yeah, but oh. I, like I remember seeing a kid get. Hit, and it like, like it shocked me. No, I don't mind seeing a kid. Oh, I've seen kids get hit by their parents. Oh, oh, yeah. Jesus! I lived in the neighborhood where I saw people get fucking. Oh yeah, belts. Oh my god! Chased down. I mean, my mom chased me one time with a fucking stick, <laughs> and she chased me, and I made believe she wasn't my mom <laughs> at, the, at the pool. <laughs> We were at, a, I was at Carmine Balzano's house in the pool. My mother told me to make the bed. I'm like, I'm not making a fucking bed. I'm out here I'm enjoying make myself. Bed for if I fucking got to go back to bed. And she would go, well, you're going to take a shit. Why are we going to wipe your ass for if you're going to take a shit an hour later, right? And I would go, I'm not That's fucking great. making the bed. And she fucking, I'm at the pool, like, with the chicks and shit. <laughs> thinking you're the man. Above the ground, thinking yeah. I'm the man. All of a sudden, I hear, Jose Antonio. And I'm sitting there going, oh, oh here no. we go. And it's getting louder and louder. And also, I see her by the fence. Get out of that fucking pool in Spanish. And I'm like, who is this lady? Is that? I've never <laughs> seen her before in my life. She's crazy. And I ran that way. Like, I got out and ran that way. And she chased me. Oh, my God. I How just old remember. were you? Nine, ten? No, 13, 14. This is. Oh, what, God. Yeah, she chased so me. So, chicks meant something. Oh, oh so this was like as embarrassing. And she <laughs> yeah, had already so taken me into deep waters of embarrassment. <laughs> there was a guy on my corner, Mr. Otino. He was really racist. And every time I'd walk by the house, he'd go, You and the niggas cutting some chickens up tonight? He would always say, like, the most racist things. <laughs> Jesus. He would call me a spick to my face. <laughs> was, this, this show's going to be up to be on Netflix. Write this TV, TV show. And then. He, we ended up becoming friends, Otino. Me and old man Otino fucking hated each other for years. <laughs> yeah. Him and his fucking German wife, his Nazi wife, I hated those <laughs> motherfuckers Nazi for wife. years. I hated those people for years. And at the end, the last two years, we became friends. And then I would go over, his, after my mother died, I would knock on his door, and he would ask me how I was doing. He had one tooth. Yeah. And he would sit on his balcony and just criticize everybody. <laughs> Mr. Tino, what's happening? <laughs> hey, fuck you, you fucking. And he would just tell me, fuck you, you fucking speck fuck. I mean, he uh. would just insult me right out every day, dog. <laughs> From the time I was 10 to I was like 13. And one day I said, you know what, Mr. Tino, suck my fucking dick, bitch. And he it's freaked thick. like he couldn't handle that in front of his wife. He's like, what you say, spit kid? I go, suck my dick. You want to fucking throw down, motherfucker? Jesus Christ. And then what happened was, I think he, he was there the day my stepdad took the gun out against Albia Reese's father. Against? And, like it was a battle? Oh, my God, bro. This is the story Damn. I'm getting to. That This is crazy. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> Mr. Tino lived across in the Clemens. <laughs> And he would sell his balcony. Buzz Cut Clemens? Yeah. Nobody Buzz, ate this. Buzz Cut Clemens. I'm picturing the TV show. He would sit there all day and just criticize people. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this dirty white fuck. <laughs> and the specials were Italian. And that's the only one he would talk to. So Dominic oh. and Michael and him would sit on their balcony and they would talk in Italian about people. <laughs> and I, I understood them because yeah, I'm so Cuban. Close to, yeah, so close to Spanish. I would understand what the fuck they were saying. They'd yeah. be talking about the American mm -hmm. and the fucking Spickaroos. They would call them Spickaroos and fucking uh, right to my face. That almost sounds nice. And I would walk past them and he'd go, hey, your mom cutting any chickens up tonight or what? Like every night he would torment me about Santeria or fucking something. Like <laughs> and he had one tooth. He had one fucking tooth down here. He was bald, like he was going bald already. He had to be retired because he just sat on his ba balcony all day. 
And I remember I used to play basketball, and I'd walk past them. They go, I don't know when you're gonna give that up. You respect. You're never gonna be bigger than five eight. Oh like he just God. say racist shit. Dream crusher, me. just. And I tell him, Mr. Dino, when are you gonna kid. suck my dick? <laughs> How did you guys become friends? Finally, after I told him to suck my dick like ten he times, Dino sucked you a little my bit? dick. No, what happened was. So the story I'm getting to is Val Valentine and the fucking uh, and the bicycle. So okay. Val let's get to Valentine first. Okay. Valentine was my Goomba, the way you're my Goomba. Yep. But Valentine was that Goomba you had that always gets the tail end of the fucking stick. Yeah. At the end of the day, his mother used to whistle for him. Yep. And only he could hear. It was like a dog whistle. <laughs> he could be in Sea Caucus in a swamp, dragging a motorcycle dog from a train that we'd steal. Yep. And all of a sudden he'd go, I gotta go. <laughs> and we go, where the fuck are you going? And you just see him. He would just tear ass home. He could hear his mother's whistle. She would go, like, and he would fucking it. fly home. He would stop what he was doing. His mother would beat the fuck out of him. Okay. So we were kids, and then I had a. Uh, the first thing that happened was, I bought a mo motorcycle from Richie Vanacek. Richie Vanacek had one of those bicycles that I already had a Honda 50, and I had already had an XL 75, and I already had an 80. Wow. But to be cool, Richie Vanacek was selling his lawn mower one that he had bored the engine out. So it was a strong, <laughs> it was like a 75. Wow. Only on the old frame. On a normal bike frame? On the old, on, on the, yeah, the, the mini bike yeah. frame. The, the, the two, with the two little tires and the whole thing. And it was the one that you pull, the low mower, you fill it up with gas and a little yeah. oil. That seems really we dangerous. Were little, oh, my God. We were like, little baby kids, and kids would just go fly oh, around the block. You would fly around the block on would them. Would they no, explode? Nothing, nothing. Jesus. You we would, would just, hear them, though. Would We'd the, run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You would pull the rope. And that's how, you know, you could tell if people, like just a, a couple people had those. You would pull the rope, and it was an engine tied to a rope like this, and you would pull it, and it would spark fucking tremendously. And you would put gas, you'd go to the gas station and fill gas, but the cops couldn't see you. If the cops saw you, you get pulled over and they take it away. So you always riding from cops. Not street legal. They weren't That's street what everybody legal. would say. So Not no matter legal. if you had it, if a cop caught you, they would take them away or warn you oh or whatever. My God. So you were always on the fucking lookout. You were living like a rebel at 12. Yeah, that's what it was. So I already had all the motorcycles, but Richie Vanacek called me one day and he goes, listen, I'm selling my the black one. I need money, 35 bucks. So on Christmas fucking Eve, I walked over to Richie's and gave myself a Christmas present. I bought Richie's motorcycle. I think I traded him a weed and a bike. <laughs> <laughs> and I ride it home. But as I'm riding it home, Richie goes, bro, be careful. The seat is not screwed in. Oh, Jesus. You got to get a new nut tomorrow for the seat. Okay. So be careful on the ride home. So I ride the thing home through Charles Court, up fucking Liberty, whatever that street is. And I make a, a Union Turnpike and I make a ride up giving that terrace and as i'm going in my garage the windows start going up the storm window the screen the window the other window and his head popped out he's like what do you got oh said, valentine yeah, heard it because he heard it he was a motorcycle yeah 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 he goes what do you got oh shit i'm coming down and he fucking slammed that thing and it had to be like 8 30 quarter to nine like christmas it was christmas eve. eve and he comes down and he fucking oh my god we're gonna have so much fucking fun but it had just snowed Oh, no. It snowed like three, two days early, and all that was left. The streets were clean, but there was black ice. I was going to ask about that. And the sides were like two feet of snow. Okay. But the streets were clean. Yeah. But so, you, that black ice is treacherous. So he's like, oh, man, I can't wait to bore this out. He goes, we're going to take the top off, and we're going to put a fucking thing in there. He could see all the potential. Yeah, he could see all the potential. But what he wanted to really ask me was, can, can, he, take, ride can he ride the fucking yeah. thing? And he's like, you know, oh, my God. Yeah, well, and, I, and he goes, do you mind if I ride? I go, oh, yeah, get on the fucking bike. Huh. So he, I thought I he was just, like, I thought he was just going <laughs> to. It's going to be terrible. I thought this motherfucker was just going to like, you know, whatever, that's it. Goes, yeah. No, 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 no. North Bergen is known for having the second hilliest town in the country behind San Francisco. Okay. Every block is a fucking hill. That's why my heart is tougher than that, because I walk those hills in North Bergen. Yep. They even have a fan page on Facebook. If you grew up in North Bergen, if you walked the hills in North Bergen, you have no idea. Like the sledding must have been when great I went home. When, when I went home, I was talking to D. They go, D. You know how many times you walked up that hill talking, mixing Gatorade and vodka as we were walking up to the butt? We would run up that hill. Wow, that's the shape we were in. It was amazing. That forty-six feet hill is a fucking monster. So Didi goes to the top. Uh, Didi, uh, 
Valentine? Valentine goes to the top of the fucking hill. And I go, Valentine, be careful because deceit. So he goes to the top of the hill and he pops like a wheelie and he fucking, and he's coming down my block. And I'm watching him. He's a good rider, you know? Yeah. I'm watching him and all of a sudden he's like 10 feet away. He looks at me weird because he hit black ice. <laughs> <laughs> Which is not good if the seat's attached. <laughs> the seat wasn't attached, and he was on it. And all of a sudden, I say, I made eye contact with him oh. as he hit the black ice, right? And he started losing control of the bike. And <laughs> like Pee Wee Herman yeah. when he gets on the motorcycle. And, and, goes I, could, through the and I could see him, like, he's panicking. Like, he hit black ice, <laughs> and it's a threat of it. You know what I'm saying? And all of a sudden, dog, the fuck, and he's squeezing the brakes, and he's hitting black eyes, <laughs> and he just fucking missed getting hit by a car, and he Jesus. didn't turn pipe, but he crashed against Lucy Snowbush's wall, like <laughs> the plants, the cemetery, flowers, all that shit, and I think he ended up getting stitches on Christmas Eve and something <laughs> else, like a broken finger. Or broke he's lucky he didn't snap his neck. Uh, and my bike was perfect. I just picked it up and walked it home. <laughs> he's down Merry there. Christmas. He's, he's like, what, where are you mind. going? The seat was up the corner. Like, the seat had flown off. What happened was he hit something, and the seat started sliding. Oh, God. So his, his arms are like this. And all of a sudden, the seat <laughs> flipped behind the thing and his arm is still on it so he just <laughs> he just let go of the bike and just let that go and let the bike go and he just slid bah! and you could see as he's sliding on the ice on his fucking back <laughs> <laughs> And he had a big scrape on his back. I mean, it was just a nightmare. The next day I saw him, he was like, I don't even know why I got on that bike and all this shit. That was accident number one while he was around me. Now, his mother didn't really like me. I was going to ask about that. His mom didn't really like me at all. His mom didn't like me at all. So now, a year later, I get a bunch of dough together, and I go up to Sears and Roebuck, and I buy one of those fucking bikes. And I bring it down the hill. I mean, I rode it all the way from Sears Roebuck. I pull it up in front of my house. And they have, like, the ringer bell or something. Something that made a noise. And he pops his head up. Oh, shit. Yep. A new bike. He comes down again. And he's looking at it. And he's like, oh, we're going to put a sissy bar on this. Da, 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 da. This is like a year later after this thing. And he's yep. like, we're probably 12 or 13. I don't fucking know. Yeah. We're young. Again, all he wanted to do was take a ride on the bike. It had those, what do you call those handlebars? The... Like this, where you hold them like this, and they go like this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, it's like it makes a big U. Yeah, like a kinda. big U. So he's on the U. Again, he goes to the top of the fucking hill. Oh it's the God. summertime. <laughs> the birds are chirping. The clouds are out. <laughs> it's humid. The ice cream Winter man's about to come. Spring, summer, yeah. oh, fall. <laughs> Kids are out everywhere. He goes to the top <laughs> of the hill, and he's speeding. I already rode this bike down a fucking hill. I went to 38th Street Park and showed it off. I rode on Union Turnpike. I bring it home. They built it for me at the fucking Sears. Like, I took it off the thing. Like, we ain't got time. Just give me the fucking sample. That's Take awesome. Take $10 off or something. $3 yeah. off. And they gave me the sample. The floor model. The floor Let's model. Go. I just, I ain't got time to build it. Yeah. But they go, no, we still got to check it out. So they checked it out and I rode it home. I, I get home and there's Valentine. And there he goes. He wants to ride the bike again. He gets on the fucking bike again. Again, he goes to the top of the hill. <laughs> Pops a wheelie and he lands and he's fucking speeding down and I could see him like go oh, and people are like go Valentine go and he's like going and all of a sudden they didn't tie this knot here on the bicycle <laughs> and the handlebar went like this they just went down and all of a sudden he's looking at me like again <laughs> and again ba, 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 ba. stitches broken hand <laughs> yeah the whole fucking the thing animals. I pick up my bike I bring it in like nothing happened. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's on his, why he's this on guy won't return like your calls. He's like, I'm not getting near that kid again. So, oh, what about the time at the fire? What? What fire? Didn't wasn't there like a kid, I think a bug spray or something? That was the, so. Now a year goes by again. <laughs> now we're into hanging out in the woods. We're, we're out. Of, we're, oh we're yeah, adults. going exploring in the woods was so the now greatest. We had the woods behind our house. Yep. So there was a soccer field where we ended up robbing. 
we robbed all the tin metal off the roof where the people sat under. Like people would sit there and watch soccer games. <laughs> we stole all the metal one one by one with a ratchet set every night. Me and Mike Denny, the devil. The uh, copper. Uh, the metal. The metal the storage that, strains. That thing that goes like this. Oh that yeah. Metal uh, sheathing type yeah, stuff. Yeah yeah yeah. Each of those sheets was eighty bucks. That's a gram of blow and fucking ten dollars oh of gas for each gosh. of us, and we would go up there with a ratchet set and take three. <laughs> As at night. the game was going on, no, 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 no. Oh, like right. in the off season, they came back in the season and go, "What happened to our fucking roof?" Oh. And then they had to put a whole new roof on it. I mean, we took every sheet of fucking metal off that thing. So, <laughs> and that took you to Columbia Lanes, which was a pool hall combination bowling alley. They had the best chocolate milk. Uh, Upstairs, out of the machine, the, water, the the milk machine. Remember when the milk came in bags, and they would put it in the thing. Oh, the you diners. press the thing. You press the thing. Yeah. Oh my God, they would give you you who like a chocolate milk, ice cold you chocolate. Know, I haven't had a chocolate, chocolate milk in with a fucking fifteen with years. With a fucking straw in it, they would make it fresh with I, a spoon. I love that you were robbing a place and then still a kid. You're like, I'd like some chocolate milk right now. That's the TV show. But that was part of the the, the soccer field. Had none. The, the soccer field was Schutzen Field. It's a great it was a name. German place. It's still there. They do big time parties, okay. and they did soccer back there. And when you rode your motorcycle back there, a guy would come out with a German shepherd and a knife, and his name was the chef. He was the chef of the place, oh. and he was a true Nazi. And he would go back there yelling in German, "Get their fucking slicing gun, 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 off my fucking field!" Wow. And he would chase you off there. There's a couple times he chased North Bergen baseball would practice there. The Todd brothers, Rich and Jeff Todd, they would practice there. He chased them off there with a knife. The guy was crazy. Wow. So you had to be crazy in shits and fields. So we started going up there and drinking and partying and shit. Yeah, as you get older. So we started going up into the woods. And then one night, it was the winter. So we would go up to the woods, get a bottle of Boone's Farm. Yep. And wine six wine. of us would drink it and fucking light fires. Okay. And every night, the challenge was to light the bigger fire. Okay. You know, like tonight I brought a piece of plywood and I stole some gasoline from my uncle and we'd make a fire. Yeah, like a campfire. We did this for about two weeks. We made, we included Valentine. <laughs> he gets up there one day and he comes up with a jar with one of these, only bigger. Okay. It was this thing right here. It was a Lysol can. Yep. He brought a Lysol can up with him. We had the fire going. There's eight of us, okay? He goes, watch this, guys. And he throws the lights <gasps> in the fire. We're sitting there for about eight minutes. How close are you guys to the fire? I mean, the fire was right there where that uh, fucking... The clicker is? Where the clicker is. And we were surrounded around the fire. It was wintertime. And he goes, let's throw this in and see what happens. He throws it in. Everybody's moving back like a fucking... Like Rambo's coming out. Yeah. Not him. He's right on top of it. Right there. About six, seven, eight minutes goes by. We forget about the fucking can. <laughs> and all of a sudden you hear, boom. Let me tell you how life, I saw the can blow. Oh my God, was there shrapnel? The, and you see this piece right here? Yeah. This blew from the thing and you saw it. It went right in the direction. Like I saw it like, I was looking at it, walking back, like going, this is not going to be good. And yes. I was walking back, like me, Dominic Special, God rest his soul. Mm -hmm. It had to be Louis the nigga, Louis Hernandez, Carlos <laughs> Perez. It had to be a bunch of those guys. And I'll never forget walking back and the, hearing the boom and seeing something fly. And Valentine was six feet from the fucking thing. Jesus. And the next thing you know, that circle was in his leg oh. and it was burning through the jeans you could see the smoke already like it had burned that's a right bomb no, no no it was fucking horrible guys it was one of the worst things i funny and bad at the same time <laughs> because this could only happen to valentine oh my god i mean he ran down that leg with that fucking thing like it was like a cattle prod yeah it was hot it was fucking on fire he probably still has a scar because oh, oh fuck yeah. yeah oh fuck yeah and dog, after that, I can't really figure out what happened between us. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what turned him off. The last two were his fault, pretty much. Oh uh, my gosh. Uh, oh my god, Joey. That's uh Yeah, I, I looked him up. I found him. He's a dentist, <laughs> but no, he won't reply. How about a shout out for Jason Hutchins? 
Joshua Wesley, Cornelius Burroughs, Lorne Rosenka, my man, Jeffrey Collins, Andrew McCarthy, Christopher Court, and Phoenix Xavier Gladsong. I love you motherfuckers. Don't forget, May 26th, working out with Uncle Joey at the fucking Ice House. Don't forget this weekend, my little brother Steve Simone at the downtown. It's the South Club. <laughs> 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 it's the South Club comedy. That's <laughs> ever comedy works. Uh, 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 it ain't a party till somebody farts. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Who the fuck are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Uh, nah, it just bothers me that, like, I feel bad. Like, yeah, I really, true in my heart, feel really bad. Like, you know, just say hello. <laughs> you know. But one of the bikes he sold me yep. didn't snow. I was walking out of my house one day. I dated this girl. I fell in love in the seventh grade with this girl. She's fucking beautiful. Doesn't matter what her name is. And we didn't have sex or nothing. Like we weren't even close to I saw her titties one time. You know, she we were we were holding hands and we'd watch Don I was like it was like the way Paul had hit me. We would hold hands and Watch mm. Donnie and Marie, and I would Donnie go to the Marie. fucking movies with the grandmother. I was an asshole. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was a little fucking asshole. That was my first girlfriend. Yep. And I thought you had to bring chocolates and flowers. And meanwhile, I'm not getting any pussy. I'm yep. dry banging on that fucking thing every night. I'm like, fuck this. But my, we we played hooky a lot every mm. night. And we go back to my house. And one day, they called my mother. My mother just happened to be home at lunchtime. They called. So she lived caddy. Yeah, like on yards. an angle. Yeah. My mother went in the backyard and started calling her a whore. Buddha. <laughs> Whoever raised that little girl's a whore. She's over here every day in my son's bedroom and just <laughs> embarrassing. Wow. And then we got to a house, her mother sat us down and she goes, Your mother is out of control. The things she's saying back there, you're not allowed in my house no more and all this shit. And Buddha. Oh, she was calling her a whore. Your daughter's a skinny whore. Janice Rossi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was my mother. It was terrible. Terrible. It was just embarrassing. And then we weren't allowed to see each other. And then it slowed down. And it ended up we didn't date. And I got left back and the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And then we just broke up one day. There was no... At that time, I was just heartbroken. Yeah. I I was more heartbroken about getting left back. There was nothing worse than feeling stupid. Yeah, and I and I did it over a fucking broad. You know right. what I'm saying? Like I, I got so infatuated with her that I forgot about ge- Like I failed geography. I never forget. I went to summer school for geography and math. Right. And like I, I, like I couldn't even resist her pussy. I like I, I stopped going to summer school just to dry hump her and be with her in the daytime. That's how weak I was. You know, yeah. I was just weak. But that taught me like a big, like I couldn't let my mother know I, I got left back, so I had to live on the straight and narrow now. So I had to study every night. There was no reason why my mother would have to get called to school. I was very careful. Gotcha. I had to live for four years very carefully. Yeah. I couldn't. It, no, 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 no. I, I took my mother away from the game. Like I, yes. I didn't let her know anything. Yep. That, no reason to even think. No. She kept asking me, when, am I, when are you going to graduate? And oh, I said, God. you know what? I'm supposed to graduate, but I'm going to basketball camp instead. Gotcha. She's like, you're going to make me so depressed. I can't believe I'm not going to see you graduate. And I'm like, ah, you'll be here to see me graduate high school. And, I'm, and I kept, kept, kept going. The, the lie just kept going. That's how lies work. Then I got into the freshman year. And fucking, I'm like, I'm, when is this going to stop? Then suddenly, and I'm like I always said in that story, when, she, when I found her dead, the first thing that came to my mind was, I knew she wouldn't find out I got left back. Mm-hmm. Like, I just knew it wouldn't come to that fucking time. But New Yorker, that was the girl's name. We stayed friends. You know, mm-hmm. we tried to stay friends or whatever. And then we became kind of friends. We all played together. I got over it. Yeah. I started going to karate and I started playing basketball more. And I got back into the string of things. Yeah. And I, I forgot all about her. You know what I'm saying? I think I started dating somebody else, a girl that's dead now. Jesus. God bless her soul, Helene Ketter. And. We were friends, like just like hello and goodbye. I was friends with her brother. You know how it is. Yes. And one day I'm leaving the house and Valentin goes, hey man, take a ride on this bike. It doesn't feel right. Mm-hmm. So sure enough, when I hit the left on the corner, I felt that the steering wheel wouldn't move fast enough. Gotcha. Like the steering wheel needed a WD-40. Yeah, or a little oil, oil or something. Oil. 
So I just took the thing to Charles Court and I went up the hill. You know, I didn't stand up, so if the chain broke, I would fall. I just right. pedaled gently, and I went up Charles Court, and I got to the top of Charles Court, and they were playing. I put the bike down. Charles Court is one of those streets that's a loop, a cul-de-sac kind yeah, of sort of, nice. but it does have an island in the middle. Cool. And a girl lived in that house. There was two houses in the middle, and there was a bunch of bushes and shit. The guy on this corner was the guy that was working with the ice man. Oh, my God. Yeah, that block was a hot block. That was the guy that was the guy that taught Iceman how to use the poison. Oh uh, Mr. Softy. Mr. Softy. Mr. Softy lived on Charles Court. So we were all playing. Charles Court had Sabatino, uh, Dean Altman, uh, the, those two kids that the father was Mr. Softy, Al Ariza. They had, they had their own little community on Charles Court. Yeah. You didn't have to leave Charles Court. Charles Court had their own kids that played with each other. So given that terrorists would go over and play with Charles Court, me, the Specials, Valentine, Michael Clemens, and by that time they would they wouldn't say it in English to his face. They would say it in Spanish. And to saying, Valentine? No, to Michael Clemens. Uh -huh. They would say Clemito tiene piojos. That means Clemens has fleas. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> piojos <laughs> means fleas. <laughs> So after all this spick thing and spick that, how many times did he have lice? Just once, and he never his lived whole it down? family had it. And they lived; they could never live it down. Like, <laughs> right. People wouldn't go what to the house. Mistake. Yeah, people wouldn't sleep over what there. Yeah, and forever he had fleas. <laughs> he still won't friend me on Facebook. <laughs> but, but he won't friend me. Can't get over it. He won't friend me on Facebook. Not because of that. <laughs> Wait, why won't he friend you on Facebook? Because what? one day we were out there playing, <laughs> and Michael Clemens got into an argument with Carmine Balzano's son, Anthony. God bless his soul, too. So something, they got into an argument about a bike. I don't know. I was not there. I was there, but I wasn't there. You were yes. there, but you're not there. Yes. So <laughs> it's a summer day. Otino's on the balcony yelling racist stuff at people. <laughs> the tooth guy. <laughs> the Zanatis are out. <laughs> Puerto Rican Nelson lived there at the time, the pervert. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking this is the best TV show ever. I best just have a map in my head, like of the house. Yeah, oh, like, I took you. I you took know, you there. I yeah. showed you. I mean, if you watch the film, I'll show you. I'll show you where Puerto Rican Nelson lived. The Zanatis. Then across the street was Raúl. <laughs> Raúl lived across the street while they were moving in. Me and Michael Special broke into their house. They <laughs> Robbed them when they were moving in. So I had a stereo. So I stuck the stereo. And I had it in my bedroom. Guess what? I became friends with Raul. So Raul would come over to my house. And I would never let him in my, <laughs> in my room. My mom would go, take Raul to your room. No, Raul can't go in my room because I had a stereo in my room. Oh, my God. While they were moving in from the Bronx, we oh. robbed their house. And for years, they kept saying, well, this is a terrible neighborhood. We got robbed as we were moving in. <laughs> oh, as they were moving, the house across the street always had oh. drama for me. They could never have the right renter. Next to them was a girl named Grace something and her sister, and they were really cute. They ended up moving to Tatinac when we were in high school. On the top of the block was a girl named Grace Savoya, a.k.a. The Onion, because Savoya <laughs> means the onion in Spanish. And her mother was hot. Hot mom. Hot mom, and they were really sweet. Grace was very sweet. But Grace's mother had, was having an affair with a, like an older man that was married. And this is way before Beverly Hills Cop, dog. Yeah. This is 75, 76. While he was up there fucking the mom, we put potatoes in his gas pipe. And he <laughs> tried to start the car. <laughs> Nobody knows what I'm up to. And the car wouldn't start. And he would fucking die. <laughs> you know how many potatoes we put in his fucking car? <laughs> and he would never look there. God, maybe it's he good kids like, have TV now. Like, like, just, yeah, maybe the whole uh, iPads aren't a bad uh, Keep them out of trouble. Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> they probably, like, do you think they have police reports about, like, the, the whatever, the giving their terrorist, like, kid gang? Like, something's going to happen? It was just, guys, it was just growing up. It was just growing <laughs> up. It was just growing up. I didn't do any of that stuff. No, no, it's just growing up. You cannot. That's oh, incredible. That block. I used to have, I used to <laughs> I had a backyard, and it was it was that block, it was one foot block, 
inch thick blocks of concrete oh, yeah. that are loose, and you're supposed yeah. to put concrete in the middle of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My parents were Puerto Ricans. They didn't do that. They just laid the block down in the dirt. Yep. And I put turned that into a basketball court. That's why I was such a good dribbler. Oh, because you couldn't dribble everywhere. You could no, 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 no. You couldn't dribble on there. Yeah. I figured out how to hang a basketball court in my backyard and have three on three games, and dribble on that floor. That's it was. A- it was. You'd be dribbling, the ball would jump out of your hand. Right. I figured out how to dribble because I would dribble that. But not only did I have a basketball court, I turned it into a pseudo baseball diamond, and I had the green monster. But it was in my yard. The green monster was the O'Rourke's yard next to us. Nicest white people you ever met. You know. Very polite. We'd bring over like Christmas cookies and shit. Yeah. They could not take us. We were playing the fucking Spanish always music. Going, oh, God. The God. Spanish music. So I built a fake brick wall and called it the Green Monster when they went on vacation. <laughs> was there a fence between your backyard or no? There was a fence. So you would hop the fence and put the wall the fence, over there? I put the wall over there. So That's if you great. hit a home, so we put we put an extra guy over the fence and we His played job is just to. Right. So I just took bricks and put them. <laughs> Together, Wait, real bricks, real bricks. I uh-huh. took them one day. I bought them from Rendell Lumber. I think Carmine <laughs> got them for me. They delivered them to my house, and they put them in my backyard. Me, one by one, I took each brick, jumped the fence with each brick. I threw them over, and I built a wall that was probably five feet, but it was just made of brick. There was no concrete. Okay, are yeah. you following me? It was yeah. just made of brick. That's not a very sturdy. No, so I made it stay like this. I don't know how. And one night we're having a softball game there. <laughs> and there's this kid that has bad acne on my block. <laughs> Michael Special. He had the worst acne you ever seen in your yeah. life, dog. He had a pimple on his lip one time. It was a it was a white head in, around the black head that had gotten infected. Oh, that had a And he so bit into bad. a cheeseburger and the thing popped right oh. in front of us and you saw the pus on the cheeseburger. Oh. I will never forget that. <laughs> and that place is still there. That no wonder you place. get mad when they eat cheeseburgers. Oh my god, it was oh disgusting. <laughs> he had pimples everywhere. He had the worst acne. Yeah, it was in the, the worst. worst. I had bad tor- acne as a kid. People would tortured. torture him. He had it on his back, yeah. his yeah. neck, and they were horrible, horrible whiteheads. Like that just stuck out an inch. Uh, like when you talk to him, you want to pop him. Like, yeah, like, yeah. Let me get that pop. Let me come on. <laughs> let me pop that fucking zit on your forehead. Like it was just a horror show. He was playing out for you one night, and I hit like a bomb, <laughs> and he's running towards the thing, <laughs> towards the wall, like. <laughs> Like Carl Yastrzemski. I mean, <laughs> he's running towards the wall. And brother, guess what this motherfucker does? He tries to put his foot up on the wall. <laughs> and the ball. I'm finally one of the guys. <laughs> Wait until they see how good of an athlete I am. When he fucking went through that wall, <sighs> you should have seen the look on his face. <laughs> All the bricks were on top of him, stitches, the whole thing. <laughs> He won't, talk to, me. He oh won't talk to me either. He oh won't my talk to- gosh. Listen, I talked to his sister, and his sister and me connected out here 15 years ago. And she told me that she asked him if he knew me, and he goes, Nope. And I go, That's a lie. And she goes, No, he makes believe like he doesn't know you today. Wow. Because the abuse on him was so bad. Like, he still, like, he, he, only, he only talks to one kid. And his younger brother died. Hmm. So he always blamed us. Didn't blame me, because I wasn't with the brother when he died. Me and the brother. He was a kid when it happened? He was 16. The brother that died was 16, and Michael was probably 18. What was his nickname? Uh, That's sad. What did they call him? Creature Feature or something? (laughs) They, They called him something. So was the sister older or younger? Younger. And she she was about five when Dominic died. Mm. So she calls me from time to time. We always talk on his anniversary, August 4th. We were into mm. THC Crystal. And he took it one day, you know, with these older guys and jumped into not Lake Apacon, but the quarry or something in Jersey. Dude, that was always happening. Like those late drowned. 70s, and that stuff drowned. was bad. And he fucking drowned. And I still have a picture of him. I light a candle from every Monday. And I put a glass of water from him. You know, he was my goomba. But he got involved in something, and I stopped hanging out with him. Like, I just, we outgrew each other. But yeah, we, we went to offense, defense, football camp together. We did a bunch of things together. But the older brother 
hooked up with a, he quit high school and he hooked up with an older woman. So when the brother died, he blamed it on himself for mm, not, for not being, being there. there. But what happened with Michael Clemens at the end was that one day Anthony and him, Anthony died, but Anthony was always getting into arguments. And then when a parent would come out, Anthony would yell at the parent. And then when the parent would say something to him, Anthony would go home and get his father to beat him up. <laughs> and it was classic. And at that time, everybody knew of Carmine's reputation. He was the toughest guy in the neighborhood. He was the, he was the mayor's driver. Got and he was a detective. Said. Yeah. And he was involved with a lot of people, and they were lighting fires. So I used to call him uh, the torch because he had a go-go bar slash flea market. In the daytime, it was a flea market, and at night, it was a go-go bar. Wow. So <laughs> it was known that he was good at fires, but one day they actually caught him. He tried to let, light the go-go bar on fire. And some kids were outside playing. They're like, mister, there's smoke coming out of the building. He's like, there's no smoke. You're not seeing anything. Here's five dollars a piece. Get out. Those kids went out and called the police. And then they tried to prosecute him. Wasn't he a police officer? He was a cop. Yeah. And he still kept his job. And he got, yeah, because he faked a heart attack. So you fake a heart attack instead of going to jail. <laughs> and you don't have to answer questions until you get out of the heart attack. So you get your attorney, that you attorney up. So if you get in trouble, you get a heart attack, a fake heart attack, and you, and you fucking, oh yeah, this was classic. So by this time, he was notorious. He had already beaten up Mr. Robson. And he Did you guys see it? Yeah, oh the, yeah. That's how I became friends with the family. Oh, the, I remember. You stood up for the kid, right? You stood, stood up, up for, for Anthony, yeah, right? I stood up for Anthony by mistake, like not knowing, just from what I had learned. You, and you just moved Street. there, right? From New York. I had lived there for about maybe a year and a half, and I had not gone to play with those kids. I was petrified of those kids. Yeah, I remember that feeling. Those kids didn't look like the New York City kids that I knew. They looked a little harder, a little weirder. Yeah. But once I got out there, I liked them, and I became friends with this Italian family. Mm-hmm. And call, you know he anything he gave to, bro I did he did a lot for me when I was growing up I had a no show job at Harvest Man as a janitor wow. I had a no show job at a park I didn't oh dog he took care of me like it yeah, was fucking understood you're a family I was fa you know I was telling him I was telling Lee last night that his famous words to me always were if you want to kill somebody invite him off for dinner. And, and I was like eight, and I was like, what the fuck are you talking <laughs> Age about? Age inappropriate advice. Like, I met him when I was 10. I'm lying to you. I met him when I was 10. And from the time I was 10 or 11 to fucking after he did it, then he finally invited somebody to his house, and he shot him seven times in self-defense. <laughs> in October of 83, he fucking shot a guy. Or October of 82, he shot a guy seven times in the back in self-defense. <laughs> and they found out he ended up owing the guy half a million dollars. That's why he shot him. They put a gun in the guy's hand. The guy laid him down. And Carmine lost his job, but he never lost his pension. Wow. This was a crazy block. And he was the king of the block. So, but he lived on by the park. But wow. given that terrace belonged to him. And Anthony got into an argument with Mr. So it's a summer day. Everybody's on the back. They're all Italians. Everybody's on the fucking block. Mm -hmm. Michael gets into an argument with Anthony. Anthony gets into an argument with Michael's father. Mm -hmm. Anthony goes, really? I'll run home and get my dad, and we'll fucking figure it out. He came back with Mr. Carmine handcuffed him and beat him up in the neighborhood in front of everybody. Just started punching him like you see in the movies wow. with the handcuffs on. And the guy's yelling, police brutality, police brutality. And everybody started sweeping. Not my business. Everybody on the bunk started sweeping, or they went inside the house. The only person who stayed outside was Otino, yelling in German and shit, <laughs> like whatever the fuck, and his Nazi wife. Was that the one where he had two cruisers come up and they were writing tickets to fake people? Yeah, and then the cops would come, they'd write fake tickets, and then that he and he beat him up handcuffed. And then he unhandcuffed him. To make him apologize? No, he unhandcuffed him and left him on the floor. And then they were yelling and screaming, didn't anybody see nothing? We're going to press charges. And the whole block was like, nope. We don't know nothing. We don't know nothing. So he got really, I, 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 he never friended me. He never friended, you know, I tried, he's active on there. Yeah. But I spoke to other people from the name, and they go, no, he never. He just that. wants to. After that day, you know how embarrassing that is to see your dad get beat up and nobody fucking stick up for him? Yeah. 
But after that, dad became friends with Otino, though, because Otino saw I was tied up with Karma, and he's like, oh, okay, I won't call you Spick. Yeah, 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 yeah. So now I was allowed to sit on this oh block God. and talk to him at night, and I'd go over there at night and sit there in the summer nights and talk to him. <clears throat> that was a very interesting block, man. That was a very interesting Puerto Rican Nelson, the the, the pervert, <laughs> the one who would play football with us and shit in the robe all the time. He always had a robe on, bro. <laughs> it was the weirdest fucking. This is thing. the greatest TV show that's never been made yet. I'm serious, Joey. This is too good. I love how this all started with talking about forgiveness too. Yeah, this yeah. is what it's about. It's forgiveness, really. I never forgot none of those stories. I never forgot. That, and there's more. Like, when you bump into people. Like, I talked to Gina a lot. I Whose sister was that? Gina lived on Charles Court. Uh, I just talked to her two days ago, and she's like, are you on the podcast? I want to talk some shit. So I might have a call in. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah. I still st talk to her. And uh, one of the guys, the people who took me in, they're, he's running for something in town this, this May 5th or something. I don't know. I don't know what happened if he won or not. May 9th, I don't know when the election is, but it's weird that that when we went down there, remember, a guy came out, me and Lee went to that neighborhood, and we sat on that, that street is completely different, that, that's, at one time, that street, in the summer, it would have 15 kids on it. Yeah. 15 fucking kids. Yeah. And the street over, 38th Street Park, there had to be 30 there, and Charles Court had about eight or nine. Yeah. Liberty. Even the school, the block where the school was, that block there was a hot block. It was the Messinas, the Canellas, who's called into the podcast, Ray Canella. He owns the fucking uh, horror show thing. Richie Vanacek lived on that block. There was a Deborah Musella. That was a, that was a hot block too. We had four, so five. Talk about good times. And all then you people. talk about the, across the park, the Balzano block. That was Carmine Balzano, Carlos Perez, the Carnies, Brian Carney. One time we pissed in a bottle. We put a lid on it and put it back in the six pack, and he took it out and drank the piss. <laughs> Hysterical. You can't write that shit. Do you understand me? He was sitting there for an hour with this piss, just drinking and going, man. Oh. Hilarious. We pissed in a nip, one of those eight ounce beers, <laughs> and we put the lid back just on. Just a little pony Brian, bottles, a little bit. To this day, anytime you mention Brian Conn, they're like, man, didn't he drink piss one time? <laughs> yeah, like, I love how yeah. nobody ever gets over the most embarrassing, worst moment of their life is what they're known for forever. <laughs> didn't he drink piss? Didn't he drink piss one time? And he had sisters oh. and shit. You had the benders, you had. You had so many fucking people on that block, like so many kids, and now you don't see a kid anywhere. No. Like not even by fucking accident would you see a kid playing or talking or doing anything. And it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart. Look at Lee. Lee goes, I never did none of that shit. Like I had fun, man. Who fucking builds a wall out of bricks? I never thought somebody was going to go In someone through. else's yard. What are you... I never they there made a the mistake. There. Yeah, I, oh, I just left it there too. Yeah. They they came back from vacation. vacation the like, rocks, like what the fuck? <laughs> they just saw bricks with blood on it. And they were like, what the <laughs> fuck is going on? I could see my dad just be like, honey, just don't ask any questions. You have like, no idea how. Cra and then next to them was the specials, but next to them was an Irish family, and I just became friends on Facebook with the younger kid. He was Vita's age when I was 16. His name was Timmy. Okay. And he had an older brother who was just nuts. Like they had already said at 16 he had killed somebody. Like him and the Gizzies hung out. Like he hung out with a tough crew that was doing heroin. Wow. But he had a girlfriend, Angel and her sister, with two Italian girls that were banging. Do you understand me? Banging. At 50. Yeah. If I was 12... They were 17, 16. Oh, yeah, that's a whole. And I'll never forget, we were at the soccer field one day, just minding our own business, and we heard, like, oh, oh. and we looked over a wall, and there's Maloney. That was his name, Timmy and the something Maloney brothers. Yep. And they had an older brother who was crazy wild, and people knew not to mess with him. Like, he didn't even hang out in our neighborhood. He would just walk past us and look at us like, fuck you, kids. Yep. Like, you don't know nothing about life. And he was fucking angel. He had dug out like a trench <laughs> in the side of the bill of the fucking hill. And they were hidden. They were hidden in this thing. 
and we're up there with him and I remember her pussy was hairy as fuck. <laughs> he flipped her over and was fucking the doggy style. And we were like 12, our heads were about to Explode. blow the fuck up. Like we had never seen this in, in, uh, in, in person. Like yeah, that's never crazy. Seen this. this was like the crazy, this had to be like summer of 75. That was like my craziest summer with those guys. Like we had a great, great summer. Like that Sam, summer of Sam and all yeah. that. It was like one of those summers where it was hot. But I'll never forget that. We looked over and we started giggling like little faggots. <laughs> And he stopped what he was doing. He's like, who's up there? I'll kill you. You know what? That dude coming and after dog, you. dog, we ran. <laughs> and then he would see us. And he's like, I knew it was you watching us. I'm going <laughs> to fucking kill you, motherfuckers. I'll poke your fucking eyes out. And we would just be like scared. Like, oh, my God, Timmy Maloney. He, had, he ended up OD in a couple years after my mother died. Wow. Then the old man died. But the son, the little guy still. And I finally friended him on Facebook. Timmy. <laughs> and he told me, I still remember you. He had a, he had a dog that the dog would just chase rocks and he would throw tons of rocks and the dog's teeth you could see would just char oh. they didn't have tips from the even the dog was tough in that the house the dog was tough yeah 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 and I remember when I got a dog my dog ran away and killed one of his chickens and his dad was gonna kill my fucking dog Crystal and he didn't he was a good man wow isn't it amazing 40 years later you still remember every house every kid Every dog that your neighbors had, like there's one neighborhood I, I remember. I remember what people gave out on Halloween from the '80s. I'm like, oh yeah, they give out a full can of soda. <laughs> I remember a certain candy bar. You, it's weird that you can those memories last forever. I, I can't forget them. I mean, they're who I am today. That, that whole neighborhood. When I look at it now, it's like I'm I'm on high alert. Like I have to. I go in. I make a left on giving that terrace. I go up the block. I make a U turn. I go back down to Pass and Plank Road, and then I make a left on Charles Court. I go a loop. I look at all the houses, and it's like just, it's like going to therapy. Yeah. Like you still see the people playing in front yeah, of the You see the people walking out of that. Exactly, it yeah. Breaks your the hair on my arms is standing up. I did that. Last up. It breaks your fucking heart. Like it breaks my heart. Like, to, 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 you know, all the nooks and crannies, you know? Like that house on the corner. That, a girl, a lady named Faye lived there who was hot. Mm -hmm. If she was 37, she had two daughters, and she lived on top, and her husband was like 55, but Faye was fucking hot. Yeah. And she had two French poodles that one of them was blind, so she would have to walk them across the street in each arm, and she would wear hot pants with a halter top, big fake fucking titties in the <laughs> 70s, and I had it in my mind that Faye had a crush on me. Like, remember when Chubsby Usby had a crush on his teacher and he brought a flower? Oh, Miss, Miss Crabtree, you don't yeah. have to call me Norman. Yeah, you yeah, can call me Chubsy. I was just like that. I'm like, man, she wants me. Like, I had convinced myself that she wanted me. <laughs> so I set up this plan. How plan. old were you? Maybe 13, maybe 12. Uh -huh. I'm like, I'm banging her tonight because she would walk over there about 11. And he would be inside. Usually he'd stay on the balcony and watch us and nobody could mess with her. At 11, he was old. He'd already be sleeping, so I'd make my move. So I went out with my buddies, got nice and hammered, and they're like, come on, come to a party with us. And I'm like, well, I'm going to stay home. Fuck that. I was going to get Faye. <laughs> it was a Saturday night. <laughs> you put on cologne. Oh, I had cologne. Tonight on is your shirt. night, bro. Dog, if I tell you, I even took like a flower and I hid in the bushes. <laughs> Like, like Cosby's nephew, I hid the bushes. Starting every great romance. And she came out to walk the dog with a fucking pair of hot pants on and a halter top. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? And I crawled up behind her and I go, hi, Faye. And she's like, hi, Coco, how are you? And I go, Faye, I really want you. And she's like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, I really want you. And she's like, what the fuck are you talking about? I go, Faye, I have such a crush on you. And she's like, Coco, you're drunk. You've been drinking. Go home. Please, go home. And I'm like starting to cry. But I love you and all this shit. And she's like, go home. And finally, she goes, all right, I'll let you kiss me. And Get out of here. Kiss her on the cheek or something. And then I go, no, I really want to touch your thigh. <laughs> and I touched like a little bit in between her thigh, dog, and my dick blew up like a gaucher. <laughs> I had to run home with spew coming out of me. I ran up those stairs. 
I had sperm dripping down my leg. Just from touching a thigh? <laughs> oh, my God. Just from touching a thigh, I came all over myself. Oh, God. It was fucking disgusting. Oh. And I know her son-in-law now. And I told him. We went for breakfast. And I go, I asked Faye if she remembers when I hit on her. And Does she? He, oh, yeah. And he, she goes, you should come down now and hit on her. Because she's like 70. And she tells Bobby every day, Bobby, I'm hornier than ever. Oh she was. She still. God. He goes. He's still bangable. We want to come down and bang him. <laughs> her own son-in-law tells me from time to time. If you want to bang her, you can still come down. What did her daughters look like? Were they hot too? Beautiful. In fact, the older daughter took me to get my uh, when I first got my driving test when I was seventeen. She drove me to the guy that fucking that gave you the license for fifty bucks. Okay. I reminded her of that. The younger sister's name was Kathy. Kathy's life didn't turn out that well. Okay. Kathy was a beautiful girl. We all grew up together. I could still see her face and a cute little Irish. Her name was Kathy Cardinelli, but she looked really Irish. You know, mm -hmm. her sister's Dee Dee. Okay. But Kathy was young, my age, and we grew up together. I never did anything with Kathy. Nothing like that. We were friends. We were like brother and sister. And then as we got older, she got lost. Mm. She really got lost. She had a relationship, and it just didn't end well with some guy and. And then my friend was banging her. And when I went to Colorado, when I came back, he goes, she's been asking about you. Go see her. Okay. And I walked into her apartment in Union City, right by the police station. And she had on a leopard suit with, like, crotchless things. Like, I had heard she had became, like, a sex thing, like something. Yeah. And I was curious. You know, she had never fucked me. Maybe she'd give me a little stabbing. So she's talking to me. I'm 21 years old. I was in Colorado for eight months. I hadn't seen her in about four years, but we had grown up together. Right. And it's about 11 o'clock at night, but she tried to blackmail my buddy. My buddy that was fucking her, she tried to blackmail him. Mm -hmm. But then they became friends afterward. Okay. Right? It's the weirdest thing. They became friends afterward. And he told me she wants to see you. So he dropped me off, but he didn't come in. He's like, I really, I'm not in the mood to see you. Okay. So I went inside there, and she was expecting me, and I went in, and we did a couple lines of coke, and we talked, but she kept telling me, hold on, I got to go to the bedroom. Okay. And what was going on was she had a guy back there that she was fucking. She would disappear for 20 minutes, suck his dick, and then come back and talk to me. And I was like, this That's is- That's weird. It was fucking, it was really, it was like one of those boogie night scenes. Yeah. And I just left there and never saw her again until about 10 years later, I saw her at the track and she had already had HIV. Oh man. And she was really skinny and I was standing with some guys and they're like, stop, don't move. And I go, what's the matter? They go, Kathy's here. She would go, at the end in 93, she was going to the track mm. and just hustling Johns at the track. Oh my God. For 10 bucks, 20 bucks, 15 so bucks. So sad. Then they found her in a car or something like that, supposedly. God rest her soul. Dead. It is, I was thinking about, I mean, not any as, as uh, gr graphic as that, but it's weird. Like, I used to think I was smart in school. Like, I did okay because I could memorize stuff. Mm -hmm. And there's people who I thought were idiots. But it's, like, amazing what growing up can do to you. And, like, now suddenly that person who you thought was smart is still working at the high school job and the person who thought was an idiot the doctor somewhere it's it's crazy how like it, it, you, you spend so much time with those people as kids like you think you know them and you think you know where their life is gonna go and people change I mean people change yeah it's fucked up it's uh it's a very weird life you know and it's been a great journey like comedy like I think about kind of like in Tempe this weekend like how many times we've we been to Tempe, you know? Yep. And, I mean, you're headlining this weekend. Yeah. Okay. Think about going there as an opener with Paulie to Denver yep. 15 years ago. Yeah. How good does it feel, like, internally? Like, you're like, oh, my God, I used to come to this club and make $150. Yeah. Like, I used to go to Tempe and pick up $500 for eight shows. Yeah. And I was happy to get that then. With no you plane know? ticket, yep. no nothing. You had to drive yourself from California to Tempe, six hours in a car, or it, the flight's always been a hundred each way to yep. Tempe. So you basically made three hundred dollars for the week. Yeah. If you went to Tempe, if you drove and had somebody drive you, you could save a hundred bucks. 
but that's 12 hours of your fucking life. Just pay the extra yardstick and fly. <laughs> yeah. I'm grateful for all of it. Yeah, like I, I can't believe like uh, that, that we were lucky to make this journey. Like I can't believe that it was you, me, Jim Norton before he hit, and yeah. Bobby Lee. In Vegas. In Vegas. This is as Jim Norton was just getting on Opie and Anthony. Just. Yeah, I think he was still calling into the show then. He was then. still calling into the show. This is how it started. This is how long I know Steve Simone. Yeah. That's how long, guys. And now you're headlining fucking Denver. South. Yeah. I don't want people to get confused. No, all they have yeah. to do is go to them. The comedy works. But. Yeah, you know, I got a promo code too for okay. tickets. If they use the if they use the promo code nerds, they'll get two for one tickets. <laughs> and it's Mother's Day weekend. I think they wanted a comedian that you know you could bring your mom out to the show. So that makes me feel good. That makes you feel good. It no, does no. make me. Feel and you good. do. You have you tell these type of stories only with a cleaner <laughs> outlook. Yeah. Last night I went to this uh, thing from dying up here. Hmm. And some woman came up to me and she goes, you know, you don't know who I am, but we were really looking for you a couple of weeks ago. We wanted you to come to the screening of uh, Andre the Giant. Oh, wow. The documentary. And I go, you know what? I look like Andre the Giant, but I wasn't really a big wrestling fan. Next time I gave her your fucking name. Oh, that's a I go, anything wrestling, you call Steve Simone. <laughs> And uh, she was laughing. She goes, okay, I didn't know. I, I, go, I don't really know. I know Chief J. Strombo and Mr. Fuji and, and yeah. you know, with the atomic elbow, whatever. Chief J. Roddy Piper told me Chief J. Strombo was really Italian. How mm. great. To, yeah, his name was Joe Scarpa. Rod, Roddy Piper was the greatest. He would tell me all the stories. You would have liked him if you two hung his out. His name was what? Joe Scarpa. Yeah, hey, look it up. Look it up, Lee. Wikipedia up and see if Chief that's Chief J. Strongbow, true. yeah. That's crazy. I really thought he was a fucking Indian. Yeah. And he used to sing that song, a string di- Chief J. Strongbow. Yeah. Chief J. Strongbow. And he also told me that Mr. Fuji was like a gangster. Nobody messed with Mr. Fuji backstage. He told me some crazy stories. Mr. Fuji was really from Hawaii. And he ran stuff. He was man, Oh, my God, yeah. Guy. What's it say? His name was Luke Joseph Scarpa. There you go. That is crazy. I did not know Chief J. Strombo. That's fucking bullshit. <laughs> That's fucking bullshit. I fucking hate when Indians play fake. What's it say, Lee? I can't read from here, though. Uh, he dead? Joe Scarpa, yeah. Let's see. Yeah, he died in 2012. He was 83. Wow. Uh, L- Luke Joseph Scarpa, born in 1928, was a wrestler better known by his ring named Chief J. Strongbow. He portrayed a Native American wrestler who wore a bonnet, who wore a war bonnet to the ring and would go on the war path when fans started. See, that's not, like, I can't even, like, that would never be allowed now. That's, like, the most racist thing. Is, is wrestling allowed to be racist? It's not any good now. <laughs> this was great. This kind this of wrestling was, was the this, greatest. Mr. Like, Fuji used to throw rice in your eyes. Yeah, he blows salt in your eyes. He blows salt in your eyes. <laughs> and then they would say, like, oh, he's Pearl Harboring him. Like, they were so- <laughs> So, so racist. So racist. Right. He used to, 70s, 80s wrestling was great. And he used to throw rice into the audience or something. He did something. Yep. Oh, my God. Steve Simone, you're a trip with this shit. Jesus, you, look at that. He did it for 30 years. 55 yeah. to 85. 55 to 85. Wow. I remember him in the early 70s. Never mind fucking 55 to 85. Yep. Jesus Christ. I remember him in the 80s. He was still wrestling. The 80s, I was doing drugs. I don't know what was going on. I don't know about <laughs> right. Those wrestlers quit. I didn't fucking know they even wrestled anymore. I knew nothing. You know what I'm saying? But no, it's just really weird. I brought you on today. I wanted to talk about forgiveness because you're Catholic. and It's everything, Joey. I really believed in it, and I thought that he would show up, but he didn't. So, And I haven't heard from him. So now I'm just going to take it for what it is. You know what I'm saying? That's the gift, right? You forgive somebody else, so hope, hopefully you can forgive yourself. You know? Yeah. And that's, I mean, we believe. That's that's in our creed. I believe in the forgiveness of sins. That's it. Trust God's mercy. You know, it's funny because I that's took it. the bicycle to Charles Court that day, and I laid it down, and I was playing. The one that uh, Valentine gave me? Yeah. And I was just playing, and I left the bike down. And that girl that was dry humping went over and got on the bike. Oh, and after Valentine, the handlebars the bike? The handlebars. So she got on the bike. So she was going downhill already. 
Mm-hmm. And me and my friends went around the other way to catch her. And as we ran to catch her, she went to turn onto a sidewalk and the thing stuck and she went over and landed on the head. And then the night, that night she got rushed to the hospital because she had a blood clot in her brain. Dear God. And she lived and she ended up okay, but, you know, I went over and apologized for the bike and she goes, no, I know I had nothing to do with you, blah, 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 blah. But now, in today's world, she's angry at me. Hmm. Like, she won't friend me on Facebook, you know. And then somebody bumped into her and said, you know, he's trying, he's looking for you. And she's like, I don't even want to talk to him again. And he fucked me up when I was a kid. Nobody fucked her up, man. And we were kids. We were fucking playing. I All never, right. you know. I live with that shit, but. I think however people feel about themselves, that's how they treat others. Does that make sense? I don't think it has anything to do with you. Maybe she hasn't had the life she wanted to live. You know? You got a point, brother. How, how does uh, confession work? I have no idea. It's, it's the greatest thing in the world. So if you say it and they, you do what they say, you're forgiven? Yeah. That's pretty cool. Well, it's pretty much like our faith is that Jesus died. For, he took... He, he paid the bill that we could never pay. Oh, okay. So when, when you confess, it, it's sort of like you're acknowledging where you went wrong. And the Jews killed him, even though he paid the bill. That's when you know things are bad. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Even though he covered the spread, <laughs> covered the, the spread. fucking Jews still came and stabbed him and fucking. The Romans killed him. It was, <laughs> it was the Guineas. It was the Guineas. Next thing you know, he's fucking taking pictures on the cross. <laughs> fucking poor guy. <laughs> anyway, don't forget to see my little brother Steve Simone this weekend at Comedy Works South. I got dick going on. I'm home. Like I said, May 26th, you get the fucking uh, Ice House workout. Nice. We got a special announcement coming soon for you motherfuckers. And that's it, and that's that. Life still goes on with the same. What's up, Lee? Steve Simone's doing my show on the 15th. Oh, that's right. At the Sycamore at Tavern. The Sycamore Tavern. We got uh, Christina Pazinski. We got Theo Vaughn. So that's next Tuesday night. Tuesday night. Yes. Oh, that's so great. It's going to be a fun you show. I hope we don't have a podcast. <laughs> Let's hope not. Because... <laughs> We were looking that Tuesday night, and I forgot. He just called me for Tuesday night, so. <laughs> it's always <fun>. Tremendous. <laughs> that's, a, that's the way to end the show, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, another what are you one. for lunch, I, Joey? I had shrimp uh, Creole or some <laughs> shit. Not, it's last night. I went to that fucking I'm dying up here party. You know? <laughs> How was the food? The food was, you know, I didn't, I didn't, me and, I took my wife out to dinner. And then we went there, just in case the food sucks. Yep, smart. But, the, but there was finger food. It was like pigs in a blanket. I love that. They had these little, uh, what's the pizza with just the plain, like cheese and sauce, they call it something. Like a tomato I, pie? Yeah. What margarita? Was, margarita. They, oh, had, okay. they had the little margarita. They were like a 50 cent piece. I must have oh. ate 32 <laughs> fucking thousand. Potato chips. Were, oh, my God. I was eating them. They had little tamales. It was nice. It was nice seeing Cheeto. It was nice seeing Eric Griffin. It was nice. Yeah, they're good guys. I love Jim those Carrey dudes. came in later on. You know, I don't say nothing to nobody. I didn't talk to nobody. One yeah. person said hello to me. Nobody really talked to me. Two people. Yeah. I just talked to my wife the whole fucking night. It's nice to be around. invited. It's nice yeah, to get they out. Yeah, me, and I fucking went, and uh, that's it. That's how you do it. I usually don't go to those things, but it was a Monday night. I got a babysitter. I took the wife on the date. It's great. Yeah, it's nice. And sometimes you need to do that just Have to fucking to. loosen up the house. Are you going to go to Mitzi's thing on Sunday? I'm not sure yet. I'm not good at funerals. I know. Especially, I want to go. I've already made my peace with it. Yeah. So it's just how I feel on Sunday. Yeah. That's all it is right now. Yeah. It's just how I feel on Sunday. I think I'm going to have to. It's Mother's Day. We're going to have to Uber down there. There's no parking. No parking. So Uber's going to be all over the comedy stores. So I'm not sure yet. You know, you can't bring plus one. I know. It's going to be 700 people. So the main room is going to be the old school, and the original room is going to be the the young guys. Yeah. And then they're going to have the belly room going, too. And the belly room going, too. And they're going to have tents outside and... 700 800 people i know i get social anxiety around fucking three people at comedy shows i got i got anxiety on stage in tempe last thursday night. I had anxiety at that. yeah i'm not getting into like i had to switch my flight to fly in for it but i'm still not gonna be able to get there till like 10 o'clock at night starts at 7 30 i figure by then most of the people will be cleared out i'll see paulie his brothers hopefully pay my respects and i'm gonna go straight from the airport to there and then home okay. and ari's coming into town yeah, he's, he, just, he just called. Yeah, he's staying at my place. I'm looking when forward is he coming? To 
I think he's getting in Saturday when I'm in Denver. Okay. So he's going to be staying at my place. <clears throat> well, man, I'm happy you came on today. Thank, Thank you. you. I for, love you. Those stories feeling, were the best. I was feeling guilty about the Vela thing, and I know you'd make me feel a little better, but that's it. I, he just doesn't want to be my friend. I have to accept it and move <laughs> on. I made my apology. I truly... See, you have amended universe. your life. Though. Yeah, no, I had see to. That, see, that's Look, the point of confession, though, I don't fucking do this shit... It's going to eat me alive. I got like right. three more things I got to do. Now you have to let it go, I'm though. Fucking done. Yeah, because no, God I'm, forgave you. Yeah. Now you have to learn how to forgive yourself, and then that's it. You move forward as a different person. Does that make sense? That's everything. Makes that's a it. lot of sense. Nobody's perfect. All right. Don't forget Tuesday, the Sycamore Tab, and don't forget May 20. I mean, we got a lot of dates here, but most importantly, Steve Simone at Comedy Works South. I love you guys. Have a great fucking weekend, and I'll see you guys tip top Magoo next Monday, ready to fucking rock. Stay black. Have a great weekend, and you know I love you motherfuckers. Kick this mule, Lee.